Hi, I'm Holly Higby Jansen, and I teach Lightroom Quick Start and iPhone Photography for the BPSOP School of Photography. I also teach workshops for Jansen Photo Expeditions. Today, we are going to be talking about five images from the BPSOP community. And let's get started. So our first picture we're going to talk about is uh, taken in Paris. It's called Bonne Fête Cher Cousin. And it is done by Dennis Bussers. Sorry about my accent. Um, so Dennis tells us a little bit about this story. Being too close to the Eiffel Tower, I wanted to have part of it with the fireworks celebrating the France national holiday, July the 14th in 2011. In the last few minutes, the tower got illuminated so it could be part of the picture. Even if technical, technically it is not of super grade, I consider that it gives the idea of the festive moment with the tower leaning a little bit, the culmination of the fireworks celebrating for all the French people there. I had a Nikon D90 with standard zoom 18 to 105 at 27 millimeters, handheld for exposure of two seconds at F13 ISO 800. So uh, I do love the um, celebratory nature of this particular photo, as well as the, the great color. Um, if you did it in a two second exposure, um, so we've got multiple fireworks going off during this exposure time, and uh, the color of the lights on the, on the Eiffel Tower is, is really great. Um, I do have a couple of comments that might make the picture better. Um, I do really like the composition. I, I, I like the concept of it. Um, I might want to bring, you know, put yourself in a position where the fireworks would come up into the screen a little bit more so they're not splitting the screen in half. Um, and also when I have two different separate elements in a picture, I try to keep them separated. Um, so if you could, you could move over just a little bit so that the fireworks and the tower aren't overlapping each other. Um, I love the, uh, the smoke it gives a little more atmosphere into the picture as well. Um, now, as far as being handheld at two seconds, I'm, uh, quite impressed that you were able to get this good of a exposure hand holding at two seconds. But can you imagine if you had this on a tripod, how crisp the lights would look on the tower, um, and you wouldn't have any any blurriness on it at all, but you did a great job considering. Um, there, there is a little bit of a distracting element at the bottom with the, the, the heads of the people. Um, in that case, I would probably get rid of those heads right there down at the base of the Eiffel Tower or even add more people because if you added more people, it could add more interest of the people looking at the fireworks. Um, as far as the composition of the tower, I might want to even see a little bit more of the tower. So that whole concept of maybe even getting a little bit lower so your fireworks appear higher, then you'd also get a little bit more of the tower in as well. Um, but I just love the, um, the great, the happiness in this picture, the color in this picture does definitely show the celebratory nature of this particular event. So great job. Um, like I said, I'm amazed that you handheld it and got this great of a, an exposure. So thank you for submitting and uh, great job. So our next picture is called Bridges by Tom Findall. And Tom says, when there's proper play of light, shadow, and lines, gray concrete can be art. I would definitely agree with that statement in this particular case. Uh, the camera is the Mamaya C330S lens C-Core 80 millimeter at uh, f4.5. It's a 4.5 lens, excuse me, at f8 at 1 60th of a second. Um, he's using a Tmax 100 film processing and it's a uh, negative scan. So um, this is a quite interesting picture. I love the, the play of the lines in the concrete. Um, the composition is really spectacular and um, 
yeah, I just love this particular scene. So now I'm looking at the uh, exposure. So you have it at f8, 1 60th of a second. Um, there is some blurriness in the foreground. So if you wanted to have the whole scene in focus, um, I might go to an f18 or f22 and focus on uh, the lower third of the foreground. And then your foreground would be in focus all the way to the background. So you would have a more of a, a full full focus range in that particular picture if you change your exposure. I love the composition and the tones of this picture and but I think uh, with a little Lightroom touch-ups we could really boost this picture to be extremely dynamic. Um, it already is dynamic because of the composition and the different tones of the grays and the blacks and whites in here, but I would like to really see it um, punched up quite a bit. Um, so because I teach the Lightroom Quick Start class, I thought I would show you some pretty simple adjustments that I would make on this particular picture within Lightroom. So I'm in the develop module in Lightroom and I would go into my basic module and usually what I do is I start off by just playing with my exposure and my contrast to see how the overall contrast is going to affect the image or overall adjustments are going to affect the image and then I will go back and make um, independent adjustments. Um, so as you can see, I'm just going through the different adjustments here on the panel and uh, so you can see even with clarity it's starting to bring out some more color. Um, when you go into the tone curves, uh, we have an even more um, identified adjustments with the lights, the darks, and the highlights in this particular picture and uh, shadows as well. So you can see it's already starting to look a little bit different if we go over to our comparison of the, the before and the after picture. You can see that it's starting to get um, a little more detail in the picture. So as I go down into detail, which would actually sharpen this picture, so I'm going to sharpen this uh, quite a bit. Um, what I want to see is um, more clarity in the con concrete and a little more sharpness in the in the water and in the shadows and at the same time when I do sharpening I also will do some noise reduction on it as well okay so you can see that's really starting to look interesting um, effects I will uh, a lot of times I'll do a post vignette a post cropping vignette so there's some basic adjustments on that then I would actually go in and use my my toolbar and actually do some selective adjustments. So maybe I would just select this little area right here under the bridge and make that area a little bit more detailed so we can really see what's going on there. And so I'll hit done on that particular one. Uh, maybe I'll do another selective adjustment down here because this is one of my favorite areas of this particular picture. Um, bring out some more of that uh, the shadows um, in the exposure so you can see that I'm actually increasing the reflection um, which gives it some really a dynamic look about it and what's nice about this is I can adjust it I can make it any size I want I can move it around that's really the power of Lightroom um, that's not quite as easy to do in Photoshop. You can do it in Photoshop, but Lightroom does make this type of adjustment quite easy. Um, the other thing that I would do is then I would go into my adjustment brush and then maybe affect some of these areas up here and make them um, an interesting dynamic in the black and white. So as I paint in here, you can see it's getting a little bit darker here. So it's giving me some interesting tones in the blacks and whites. Um, I might even darken under here just a little bit so it's not so glary. And then I will do and take another adjustment brush and actually brighten some of the areas on the bottom of this bridge here. 
And then with that, I can, when I paint it, as you can see, I can brighten it. Same thing over on this side. So basically what I'm doing is I'm painting with light here. Now this one, uh, I think is, it might be, I might've done a little bit too much. So I can actually go back in and erase this part that I just did. Yeah, so just cut it back down just a little bit. Um, I also really like this line right here. Uh, so I may want to go in and actually make that more obvious. So if I just paint a little line right here, I can actually adjust, see how that I can adjust the, the darkness and the contrast of that particular line. And maybe I would just sort of paint this in a little bit darker so that it's not obvious that I, I added an adjustment. So I like this line right here quite a bit. Um, so again, I will go in and make that one a little bit brighter. So now you can see that I'm enhancing, painting with light basically, enhancing the areas that are brighter and adding some more contrast into the picture. Um, again, maybe I've added a little bit too much. But you can see that it's easy once you've added some, you can, you can take it out. I'm gonna take this one out just a little bit. So um, I like the color and the contrast in the black and white there. So here's my finished version of um, adjustments on uh, bridges in Lightroom. So here's the finished version, and then here is the original. So you can see that it's um, a little clearer. The, um, the color or the black and white is um, more defined and you can really see the, the curves and the angles in this particular picture. So great job. I had a lot of time, a lot of fun playing with this particular picture and um, I hope this is helpful. Thank you. The next picture I'm going to talk about is by Glenn Donharl and it's the title of the picture is You Mean I Have to Vote for One of Them and it's this great picture of this goat with this He's almost looking like he's rolling his eyes back in his head. So I think it's, um, it's a very amusing picture. Um, I don't have any other specifics about this particular picture, um, but what I can tell about it is that um, obviously the goat is the main subject of the picture. He did use some shallow depth of field on this particular picture, which is great, which starts to isolate the goat a little bit. Um, it has a nice story with the red barn and the and the fall leaves behind him as well. Uh, but there are some things that I would do to this picture to really make him stand out. Um, the shallow depth of field would be the first thing that you would do in this kind of a picture to really isolate your subject. But it still feels a little bit busy. So what I'd like to do is actually make that goat really pop out of the picture. So if I go into my basic module in Lightroom, um, I would first just play around with, um, I'll go back to my basics, so we'll open up the basic module, play around with the exposure. I might brighten this up just a little bit, and so bear with me and I'll, I'll show you why I'm doing that. Um, maybe play around with contrast and highlights just a little bit. Um, I might actually bring, bring up, bring down the shadows just a little bit. Clarity will actually sharpen him just a bit. And so then the next step I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, go into my radial filter tool. So what that does is it actually I can select just a portion of the picture and affect either just that portion of the picture or not affect just that portion of the picture. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert this mask, which means instead of just affecting this part of the picture, I'm going to affect the outside portion of this picture. So then what I would do after I have made my selection with my radial tool, I would actually go over to the panel here and affect the exposure. So you notice that the exposure is affecting on his face. So basically I do not want to affect the exposure on his face. So I'm going to invert the mask which means it's just going to affect the exposure outside of the goat. And if you notice, I can darken down the background so that he starts to pop out more. OK, 
Okay, then I can also play with contrast, highlights, and I might brighten him up just a little bit. Shadows, it'll brighten up the shadows. So you can see now that the goat's starting to really pop out of the picture. Clarity, and if I hit done. So then after I've hit done, then I can also affect the whole portion of the picture. So you see now that the background's a little bit darkened. Um, and then I can actually go into effects if I actually want to add even more of a little bit more of a vignette to it, which actually just adds vignette to the corners. And say we'll look at some detail. He may have already been sharpened, so I don't want to over sharpen this picture. Uh, but I'll do this and then maybe add a little bit of noise reduction so I don't want them to look overly sharpened. <clears throat> the one other thing that I like to do on any kind of a portrait, maybe an animal or a person, is I like to brighten up the eyes. So you can even do that with this particular one where you can just take my radial tool again and just select the eyes and you can actually just kind of brighten that area up a little bit so that his eyes pop out, even though they're rolled back in his head. Um, it's a, it, it's kind of fun to actually highlight that. So then I can actually make a copy of this one and uh, actually do the same thing again. So now that I've duplicated the, the eye here, I wait until the hand, with the hand shows up and then I can move over this brightening of the eye over to the other eye and resize it to fit in that particular space. And now I'm able to brighten up the, the eye on the left side. And maybe if I just want to have some fun, I may add a little darkening on his nose. Just darken that up, give his, give his detail, his face a little more detail. And I think that looks pretty good. So if you look at the, so what I'll do is I'll save this as a snapshot, which you can do as you go along. You can save what you've done and you can compare it to the previous. So I can either compare the two side by side. This is the original, this is the adjustment, or I can actually just reset the original back to zero. So that's what it looked like originally. And here's the most recent snapshot that we have of him. So I think it makes him stand out just a little bit, gives him a little bit more features in his face. And um, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun if you use Lightroom in this way, if you're, you're basically painting with light. So thank you for submitting and a uh, fun picture. So this particular picture is called Marina Bay and it's by Oscar. And Oscar says that he stitched five photos together and added the black frame within the HDR shot. So um, there's some information about this image that I don't quite have enough information about it. Um, it does show up as a very small image. Um, so some of the, so because it does appear to be um, a little blurry and some there are some pixelation to it so it could be that the image was just a little too small for me to really see it clearly um, but I do love the colors of the reflection the reflections in the water are very beautiful um, the bright blue of the roof um, is really I just love the colors in this particular image and there's some interesting leading lines with the um, I'm not sure what those are in the water buoys in the water and um, so that's really adding to that really interesting reflection. Um, as far as the composition is concerned, I actually may want to add more of that reflection because sometimes when you're doing a composition and you're splitting it in half, um, you're saying to the viewer, well, what's more important here? Is the sky more important or is the reflections in the water more important? And because the sky doesn't really have any detail, I would definitely bring out more of that beautiful reflection in the water um, that could really add um, a, a dynamic interest to this particular image. Also, uh, 
again, I'm not sure if it's blurry because of the, um, the pixelation in the picture or whether this was a handheld image. So of course, when you're shooting at night, please be sure to always use a tripod. And also if you're doing uh, five pictures and you're, you're stitching them together, you can do that, actually do it on a tripod. There are tripod adapters that will allow you to do panoramas in a very smooth way with a, on a tripod. But um, love your vision for this particular picture and the colors are just dynamic. So great job, Oscar. Thanks for submitting. Our next picture is done by Carl Short, and uh, he's calling it looking for that special moment to capture a sweet personality. And uh, I would say that this is an excellent portrait. Um, there's a lot of really good things about this picture. Um, I love the way uh, the she's looking straight at the camera. There's a great expression there's good catch light in her eyes. Um, her skin looks flawless. Um, she, her, like I said, her expression's great. Um, I just have a couple of little comments that, that might help. Um, cause, uh, in a portrait situation, the subject can be, um, you know, is very concerned obviously about how they look and they want to always appear to be perfect in every way. Um, but I'll show you a couple of things that I might do with this. Uh, so I, uh, I teach the Lightroom quick start class. So I'm going to show you what I would do with this picture in Lightroom. And there's really not much, as I said, um, I, the only thing I see here is in the frame. As far as the composition, there's a little bit of her hair outside of the frame. I might actually just take out that little piece of hair, um, right up here in the frame. And it's actually this, this kind of uh, adjustment would be easier to, to do in Photoshop under Content Aware. Um, you can do that in Lightroom, but it's a, a little bit, it's a little bit more difficult. It's not difficult, but a little bit more difficult in Lightroom. So I won't do this here. I'm going to show you that. The other thing that I might do with this picture would be to crop it just a little bit so that her shoulders don't look quite so unnatural. Um, I'm not sure how she was sitting. Maybe she was lying on the ground or maybe she's kneeling on a table or leaning on a table. Um, but I think the shoulders look a little unusual. So I think just to, to fix that, I would just go in and crop it just a little bit. So within Lightroom, I would hit my crop tool and then I would unlock it so that I can leave it at whatever size I'd like it to. And I might just pull that up just a little bit. And I think with that, her shoulders don't look quite so angular. Um, it gives a little bit of a softer line to her. Um, and it actually brings the picture in a little bit closer. It could actually be a perfectly square crop also in this case. So, um, that's about all I would do with this picture. Um, I think it's a great job. Portraits are, um, can be very difficult to do and this one's amazing. So good job.